Gmail is one of my core productivity tools for getting things done. However, did you know that you can add some superpowers to your Gmail account so you can make it that much easier to manage all of those emails? In today's video, I'm going to show you three of my favorite add-ons for Gmail. Three add-ons that I simply couldn't live without. Now today, we are going to get things started with Boomerang. Now Boomerang is an add-on which is actually available for both Gmail users and for Outlook users. And here I am, I'm about to send a message. In particular, I'm about to send a question to someone. Now, this all looks pretty standard at this point. At the bottom of my dialog, I've got my send button and I can discard it and that type of thing. But you will notice down below, I have some additional features, some additional functionality. And this is what Boomerang can provide to all of your emails. First, I have a red send letter button. So if I would like to send this message into the future, I can do so. Think of how often you may have stayed up extra, extra late and you're crafting that email at, I don't know, let's say two in the morning, but perhaps you don't want the person who's receiving that email to know that you're crafting that message at two in the morning. No problem, I can hit the send later button and schedule it for it to arrive at seven or 10 or whenever I want it to be. How about the scenario of if you know the person who's receiving that email and you know they don't usually read their email until 1.30 in the afternoon? Well, I can schedule my email to arrive at that time as well. But you know what? My number one favorite feature of Boomerang is the one next to it. There's this little checkbox here, and let me explain how it works. Think of how many times you've asked a question of someone. Here I'm asking, can you please send me a copy of the team notes? I'd really like to receive these in the next two days. But what do I do after I send this email? Do I give it a particular label? Do I set a reminder in my calendar so I follow up with this person? I don't have to do any of those things with Boomerang. All I need to do is check this checkbox here, and then I can determine the length of time that I want to go by before I get an automatic reminder. So in this case, I'm gonna wait a maximum of two days. I'm gonna say two days. And what's going to happen is that after I send this email, if I don't get a reply from the person I'm sending to within two days, Boomerang is going to automatically bring my original email back to the top of my inbox. And that will be my reminder, that will be my trigger, or that will be my cue as to, oh, that's right, they still haven't told me or, or sent me those team meeting notes. Then I can either send another email, I can make a phone call, I can determine what happens next. But the great thing about Boomerang is that if this person does reply within the next two days, I do not get a duplicate email. Nothing further happens. Boomerang knows that I've been sent a reply and therefore I don't get anything extra in my inbox. This is the core feature of Boomerang that I use literally on a daily basis. Now that's not all that Boomerang provides. In fact, one of Boomerang's most basic features is bringing a message back into your inbox if you just don't wanna deal with it right away. You could just hit Boomerang and you can determine when you'd like that message to reappear. But this one right here, the Boomerang or bring back if someone does not reply, I absolutely love. All right, let's move on to add-on number two. And I've got another example set up here. In this case, I am wanting to meet up with someone. I want to set up a phone call with someone else. And you sort of know how this goes, right? You're, you're wondering if we can set up a time for a phone call later this week. And what happens? You send a message proposing a time and they say, no, nope, can't do that. How about this? And you say, sorry, I'm busy. And there's back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, trying to find the right time. Well, my next favorite add-on is called Assistant.2, and this is how it works. It allows you to propose several times where you are available, and then the person who you're receiving or who you're sending that email to can select which one works for them. So here I've just supplied a, a simple question. I'm wondering if we can set up a time for a phone call this week. What I'm going to do next, you can see in my lower right-hand corner, I have the assistant.2 icon. 
all I need to do is select this icon and it is going to open up a new dialog box. Now it looks very similar to sort of a, a meeting uh, dialog here, right? A pretty standard. I've got the, the title of the meeting here, which it is pre-populated with both of our names. Of course, I can edit this. I can say Scott and Scott chat uh, location. I can say phone uh, and I can include my, my phone number if I want to here in this, uh, in this, uh, in this area here. Let's make it a, a classic movie 555 number. Uh, invitees, here's where I can paste in uh, the, the email addresses of those who I'm inviting. I'm just gonna use my, um, my test uh, account here hotmail.com and then I can put in a description anything else that you would find standard within a meeting invitation but the real power comes down below so let's say I want to make the meeting length 30 minutes in length I'm going to select 30 minutes and here are the next three days available to me and I can see that I'm actually fairly wide open so I'm going to give this person uh, a few different choices for them so I can click here I'm going to say 3 p.m. or 4 p.m. later today um, maybe 4 4 30 and uh, let's say uh, let's say maybe uh, one o'clock on Thursday and I'm gonna give them one more time on Friday at 2 p.m. let's just uh, let's move that up to uh, ooh, keep clicking on the 15 minute mark there we go at 2 p.m. so here you can see I get a snapshot a view of my calendar it actually shows me my other events here you can see some of the other events that I've had today so it, I don't have to open up my Google Calendar in this case I've selected five different times and what I'm going to do is I'm going to select insert times into email and what assistant.2 does is that uh, oh didn't it didn't capture that there we go is that it pulls that directly into my email now here's some standard text that assistant.2 includes I'd like to set up a 30 minute meeting click on the meeting start time that works for you and down below here we have that information and when they receive this email all they have to do is glance at their calendar and say you know what I can do Thursday at one. They're going to click this link and immediately that's gonna create an invitation for them. That's gonna send an invitation to me. Actually, it's not even gonna send an invitation. It's just going to book it on my calendar because I've already said I'm available. It's gonna book it on my calendar and now we're set. Now that meeting is set up in just a single email. This is a fantastic tool when you are dealing with individuals. It's not necessarily meant for groups or groups of people to determine uh, one particular time, but it's fantastic when you're trying to set up a meeting with another individual. They just have to click once and you don't actually have to do anything at all beyond this step. After you send this email, you just have to wait for their reply and it's automatically going to be booked into your Google Calendar. And of course, if none of these times are available, they can just select the none of these times work for me, and that will send you a notification, and you can propose some new times if you like. One thing I would point out is that it will show it in your default time zone. So if you are sending this to someone outside of your time zone, you may want to mention that in your note up above, or just point out that there is an opportunity for them to view it in their own time zone because by default they're going to see it in your default time zone but this is another tool that I use almost daily when I'm setting up meetings with someone else I know what my availability is I really have no idea what their availability is I will use assistant.2 to help us both out now the third add-on I want to share with you today is called Auto Text Expander and it's actually not limited to just Gmail. You can use Auto Text Expander anywhere that you put text in online. It could be a form, it could be a document, it could be some other place. But I wanted to include it here because I find it is most useful when it comes to writing and replying to emails. What Auto Text Expander does is it allows you to create some shortcuts shortcuts of perhaps some phrases or certain words that you use frequently and you'd rather just type in a few keystrokes rather than type in a full paragraph or a full sentence so let me give you an example here here I'm asking someone a question and when I ask a question I often sign off with a very similar phrase a very similar phrase followed by a thanks in advance now it's only about a sentence and a half 
math, but you know what? I would much rather just type in a few keystrokes. So I'm going to type in the letters LFR and look what happens. As soon as I hit the letter R, it inputs this string of text, which I've already set up in advance. I'm looking forward to hearing from you, period, space, thanks in advance, comma. So this again is a common sign off. I don't use it for all of my emails, but I use it often enough that I would rather just type in a few characters and then I can have this populate immediately within my email. Let me show you how it works. So when you install the Auto Text Expander Chrome extension, you will get a screen very much like this. And this allows you for you to create the shortcut. Here you see my LFR example. Here's the shortcut uh, string of letters or characters. And then on the right is the text that I want it to automatically input. Let's try another example and I'll show you here at the bottom of the screen. Here I have one where the shortcut keys are TB N I and what that makes a lot of sense to me it might not make any sense to you but those basically stand for thanks but not interested once in a while I may receive an email from someone who's obviously put in a lot of thought or effort or time in getting to know me and they want to share something with me and so you know I will reply to those emails I don't reply to all emails that are offering me an opportunity but in those cases I might want to just send them something hey thank you for sharing this with me but I'm just not interested in learning more at this time. Instead of writing out those two sentences, I would rather just hit these four keystrokes. So I can even test this out. At the top of the screen here, uh, you will notice it gives you a little demo area. So I'm just going to type in the letters T, B, N, I. And here you see, as soon as I finished hitting the I stroke, it inputs, it automatically inputs that text. Let's go back to Gmail and, and let's use our example here just to make sure that you understand that it works in all areas. There it is, TBNI, and now that string of text is immediately within my email. So you can use this within Gmail, you can use this in a variety of other places. I just find that I most frequently use it when I'm replying to an email or maybe I'm answering a standard question something that I get you know quite frequently hey why don't I just set up my standard response over here and then I can use those shortcut keys within Gmail so there you have it my three favorite add-ons for Gmail boomerang assistant dot two and auto text expander if you would like to try out these add-ons I've included links to them in the description below as always I would love to hear from you what are some of your favorite Gmail add-ons. Perhaps I can highlight them or review them in a upcoming video. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I encourage you to give this video a like, share your comments below, and make sure to subscribe. Remember, being productive does not need to be difficult. In fact, it's very simple.